Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. As you guys know, we have taken a look at Sony's A1 uh, in a couple different videos now, so definitely check out those if you haven't seen them. But a lot of people have been asking me about more real world use uh, with the A1. Now, as many of you guys know, I am a portrait photographer, so there's a whole big story, but a lot of people wonder, well, why would a portrait photographer bother with such a fast action-oriented camera? And that's a topic for another video. But today I wanted to fo focus my attention on using this camera for one of its main purposes, and that is action photography. And specifically, I wanted to see how this camera would do handling bird photography. Uh, now, I am not a bird photographer, I'm not a wildlife photographer, um, but not to brag, I am known as Photog J the Great. So basically this means that um, I am not shy of, you know, doing different genres of photography. Um, I've done lots of different things and I always consider myself to be a perpetual student of photography. I always find it interesting to go out and try different things. So considering that the last time I photographed birds was like with a Nikon D80 and a Nikon 80-200-28 lens, I figured it'd be nice to go out and try one of the latest cameras for this purpose. So anyways, we're going to go in and start looking at some of the things that I did. Definitely, definitely stay tuned and we'll dive right in. So when the A1 first came out, I took it out uh, to a, a small spot uh, where I've been before to photograph birds, uh, and I just photographed some ducks and things like that. But honestly, I didn't think that that was really a proper test for the camera. I really wanted to do something more challenging. And recently, I was reminded by uh, one of my uh, photography students that we actually have a lot of pelicans that migrate to our area this time of year. So I thought, hmm, this could be just the thing I've been looking for. So we went out, uh, I took the A1 and the uh, Sony 200 to 600 lens, and we decided to give things a go. Now, <clears throat> the first day we went out, we discovered that the, the road that would lead us closer to the Pelicans uh, was actually closed, so I wasn't able to get as close as I wanted to. Um, and I had a few little technical missteps. Um, I forgot to turn on the face and eye autofocus on the camera, um, but that did still, uh, we still did get some interesting things that, that basically taught me a lot about the camera performance. Um, I learned a lot about the 200 to 600 lens that I'll share with you guys in another video. Um, but yeah, we were able to go out and uh, give this a test. The only two cameras in Sony's lineup right now that do bird eye autofocus, uh, at least as of this point in February of 2022, would be the A1 and the A7 IV. And uh, we had an A1, we had a couple of A7 IVs, and the 100 to 400, and the 200 to 600, and also Sigma's 150 to 600. So we had a lot of things to test. Um, but yeah, I discovered that the camera focuses very, very well. Um, it does lock on. Uh, the first day, because I didn't have the face and eye detection turned on, we were limited to just the object, track, object tracking mode, but I was still able to get some footage uh, with the Atomos to kind of show you guys. So I found that it was very, very, you know, it was very, very uh, sticky, so to speak, and it was very good at picking out the birds and staying with them and not jumping off to other targets. Um, I also gave a teleconverter a try, and this is something else that I could talk about in another video, but I'm not a huge fan of teleconverters, um, and I was really, really not a fan of the teleconverter on the 200 to 600, even though it was just a 1.4. Um, that first day, I also shot in crop mode a lot as well, but I later discovered that it was much better to just shoot in full frame mode. So anyways, after looking at all these things and uh, you know, basically feeling a little bit defeated, of course, I had to go out a second day and uh, this day we had much, much better success. Um, I went up uh, to, uh, I basically went up onto the bridge this time around so that way I could shoot from a higher vantage point. We got some much, much better shots. I shot in basically the full frame mode and I found that it was much better for me to just frame everything wider and then simply crop in post-production because keeping the camera in crop mode, you know, you get that 21 megapixel image 
and the 1.5 crop sounds like a great thing for thing for photographing something small but i found that it was much easier to just keep the bird in the frame in the full frame mode and then i could just use the a1 dexter resolution to crop in in post-production instead okay let's see here all right well i had the camera on a monopod a second ago but that didn't work out so well because uh, i don't have a monopod head I could never tilt the camera enough to get the shots that I wanted to make. So here we are, just sort of hanging out, handheld. Camera's tracking pretty good sometimes. I get uh, past these lamp posts and everything and the camera refocuses on something. But otherwise we're doing fairly, fairly well. One thing that made a huge difference was going into the autofocus settings and changing the focus tracking sensitivity. Um, I ended up changing this to a more locked on setting. And basically after that, I saw a lot better performance whenever I was tracking the birds and other objects into the frame. The focus was definitely a lot more, well, locked on to the bird. If, you're, if I'm photographing the birds and there is nothing but water, sometimes the camera grabs the water instead of the bird, although it does seem to reacquire fairly quickly. But this is only at the extremes. This is whenever I'm shooting at 600 millimeters in crop mode. So we're at an effective 900 millimeters right now. So we're asking the camera a lot. Uh, and uh, the birds are still very small in the frame at that time. All right, so we're capturing a few more shots of the pelicans now. Um, some of them are sort of guiding, they're sort of guiding off the bank and they're moving around. Uh, yesterday I shot mostly in crop mode. Today I'm actually sh just shooting in full frame mode and I'm going to crop more later. So we're getting that beautiful 50 megapixel detail. So yeah, you guys can see that there's a lot of detail to be had here. So you can see my shot, a lot of these pelicans. It's going pretty well so far. We're gonna go and see if the other road is open and uh, perhaps we'll be able to get down to that little peninsula and actually get a closer view of the pelicans. That would be really cool. Um, man, if we don't get it today, it's just not gonna, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure how many times we'll have to keep coming back until we get exactly what we want. But we're not going to give up. A um, couple other things I noticed. So, if you're shooting on H+, you will get a ridiculous amount of frames. Uh, the A1 will hit its full 30 frames per second if you're shooting in either JPEG or if you're shooting in the lossy 12-bit compressed mode. Um, Actually, on the A1, I believe it's uh, 13 bits. Uh, but anyways, if you shoot on that lost E compressed mode, uh, compressed raw mode, you will get the full 30, or if you're in JPEG, you'll get the full 30. But frankly, that was just too many frames. Um, so I ended up setting the camera to medium most of the time. And as I do pretty much all the time with the A1, I elect it to shoot on the lossless compressed 14-bit raw option instead. Had I been shooting in H+, that would have given me 20 frames per second. But as I mentioned, I set it down to medium, uh, and that gives me plenty. You know, I believe it defaults down to around 15 frames per second or so, um, 10 or 15. But uh, yeah, it was still plenty of frames. I filled up a 160 gig CF Express card, and yeah, we had we, it, we had more than enough frames. Uh, tracking wise, things worked a little bit better once I actually turned on the face and eye detection. Um, I still didn't really see any eye detection happening whenever we were photographing birds that were very small or, you know, and or very far away. Um, eventually though, one of those pelicans that we were chasing for days um, ended up flying over closer and uh, I was able to go down and get close by the water's edge and get some shots there. And as soon as that bird was larger in the frame, we could actually see the eye detection working a little bit there too. Um, now, in terms of being able to capture these types of shots, uh, it's very, very challenging whenever I'm recording the screen because uh, if you guys have never tried to record the screen on a Sony camera before, uh, what happens is if you have your info display turned on, 
basically it kills the EVF and it kills the back screen on the camera so you're stuck having to look at the at the Atomo screen and uh, it's not the ideal thing for tracking so I got some shots of this pelican as he was kind of uh, kind of swimming but the shots where I actually captured him in motion those are all done without recording the screen so that way I could actually see how to you know frame the shot a bit better and look at my viewfinder but anyways all in all very very very, very nice um, I definitely will keep playing with this I've noticed that this technology it's obviously still in its infant stages um, it's definitely it's definitely better than when I AF first came to like people subjects back in the day but it still has a ways to go it's still not quite up to the eye uh, autofocus performance of people or the eye autofocus performance with other non bird types of animals um, but yeah, just, just a few little quick notes about it. Um, I did get up to some pretty high ISOs uh, at different points. Um, if I were going to go out and do another part of this test, which I'm actually already working, working to go out and do, um, I wouldn't have shot at F8. I was wanting to get a bit more depth of field, but what I've discovered is on the Sony 200 to 600, it's actually very sharp, even at F6.3. So if, if I were doing this again right now, I would shoot at 6.3 and I wouldn't stop now into F8. But uh, I did try the lens wide open at 6.3 whenever the uh, lighting conditions were very poor. And I ended up with some shots that were at 6,400 ISO. Um, I was out uh, a couple days after I did all this other shooting. And uh, I, I was, I was uh, basically just uh, not expecting there to be any birds, but I still had the camera with me and the 200 to 600 with me. And it had gotten to be very late in the evening but I still, uh, and then all of a sudden this, this, uh, this uh, great blue heron flew down and I said, oh man, of course I've got to get this shot. So I ended up at like 6,400 ISO and I was kind of anticipating this bird flying and sure enough, the bird started to fly and I got a few shots there. But the camera does do pretty well at high ISO. Also, uh, in a, hopefully in a future video, I will be getting a chance to try out some of these types of uh, photos with Sony 600 F4 G Master. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys kind of a quick take on things and, and some of my experiences. Um, if you haven't seen how to set up the eye autofocus on Sony cameras, the A1 is basically, there's a few differences here and there, but it's pretty much mostly the same. Uh, I'd say 85, 90% the same as some of Sony's previous models like the A7R4. So I have a A7R4 uh, video that I did, or I used the A7R4 rather for an eye autofocus video that I did, uh, not some, quite, quite some time ago, but I'll link to that so you guys can check it out as well. Um, definitely, if you're curious about setting up your A1, everything will still apply. We just now have the addition of the bird eye autofocus also. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have questions about eye autofocus on the A1, write me in the comments below. And I may not be a wildlife photographer, but I am continuing to uh, get back into the swing of things with these birds. And I'm learning some things as I go. So uh, if you guys have questions about that, or if you would like me to test some other aspects of this, I do read all the comments. So write them below. And I already have plans for another uh, shoot to test out this with the birds. So perhaps anything that you write here, that could end up being mentioned in my next video. Something else we're going to be taking a look at in a future video is a hands-on test of the 70-200 2.8 G Master version 2. I did bring you guys a video about that not long ago, and I kind of gave you sort of like a sort of scientific lab style analysis of the lens, but I have gone out and done some real world shooting with it as well. So also, be sure to stay tuned for that video in the near future as well. Until next time, guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all the updates. My videos are kind of slow coming these days, but I'm still actively working to come up with more videos for you guys. And uh, certainly follow me on social media. I am known as Photog J the Great on Instagram and Facebook. You can check out more of my work there. Until next time, guys, this is Jeremy Smith signing off.
cool. Uh, Joe shot some slow mo with his A seven four. Tell you what, that is a cool looking photographer right there. Oh great. You can actually see that my nose is dripping. In glorious 4K resolution, just what we needed to see here. I really am going to have to give Joe a wider lens to play with and maybe work on my expressions if I'm going to be all dramatic in slow motion next time. <laughs> 